Vanadzo is the third largest city in Armenia. It is located in the north of the country and was industrialized in the Soviet era. However, outside the city gates is a world of fairy tales, fables and heroes, all set within a breathtaking landscape. Several monasteries were built along a narrow gorge to the north, which is why this route is known as Monastery Road. The wild Fambak River accompanies the road up to the Georgian border. And monasteries such as that of the Korbaj Monastery are located on the cliffs above the valley. well-maintained stone buildings, difficult to spot. The road continues further up a gorge that was created over thousands of years by the leachate of the river. Enormous and overwhelming rock walls tower up on both sides. It's a dramatic sight that stimulates the imagination. It is part of a country whose inhabitants have had to endure a great deal throughout its history. A country that has been inhabited since primeval times mountainous country with several small mountain ranges between 1800 and 2500 meters high. A tiny kingdom with its own city fortress was built here in 966 AD. In 1238 the Mongols attacked destroying everything and its inevitable downfall began. Only the natural landscape remained unscathed. Again and again, looking as though they've been glued to the cliffs, emerge the well-camouflaged remains of small monastery complexes. The narrow road continues up the slope of the canyon. Increasingly, the view opens up to mountain peaks and deep down into the canyon below, until finally, the turn-off to Odzun appears. We arrive on a plateau which provides an impressive insight of the elemental forces of this environment. Odzun, in common with numerous monasteries and churches, was not only a center of spiritual life and education, but also one of science. In around 717 AD, Hovhanes resided here as head of the Armenian church. He improved and consolidated the liturgy. On the walls, fragments of stone reliefs are considered to be masterpieces. Arcades surround the north and south sides. Around the cathedral is an old cemetery with cross stones, many of which have toppled over.
Much of the sacred building appears to have subsequently been altered, including the annex of the side passages. Everywhere, religious signs and inscriptions look like secret messages that only the monks understood. The exact purpose of the numerous rooms is difficult to discern. In the 1980s, restoration of the church continued, although it had commenced in the 19th century. In the process, precious stone sculptures were gradually discovered. There's a mysterious monument next to the church, a large double arch of tuff. In the middle of the arches rise two bright limestone steles. Are they pagan gods or saints? Leaves and tendrils decorate both walls and portals. The sturdy construction survived numerous earthquakes. This sacred building and the history of thousands of years has been preserved in this remote environment. The domed building is supported by four pillars which are connected by stone arches. The weight of the dome is evenly distributed over the entire structure. The murals in the interior have not been well preserved. Only the 2009 restored Mother of God with the Christ Child above the altar. The church is not only long, but also surprisingly high, and elaborate decoration was deliberately omitted. The small balcony is the remains of an upper floor that was once used as a library. Further along Monastery Road, the route passes the town of Alaverdi, the centre of the Tumanian region. Here, copper ore was discovered, which for a long time led to the wealth of this small industrial city. Nearby is the eponymous village of Sanahin, above which is the Monastery Academy. The foundation of the monastery probably dates back to Saint Grigor, the Illuminator, who is thought to have erected a cross here in the 4th century. In 118 AD, one of the most artistic monuments of Armenian architecture was built, the vestibule of the Church of the Redeemer. Above the square interior, mighty pillars support a large bright dome. The capitals of the massive low pillars are decorated with artistic stone carvings. Construction of the monastery began in the 10th century. It comprises three churches, two vestibules, a college, library, and bell tower. The tombstones are decorated with ancient religious motifs.
numerous decorations and the remains of several wall reliefs are still visible today. The wife of Ashok III had the main cathedral of the monastery complex built between 957 and 966 AD. The floor is laid out with ancient tomb slabs and indicates that the tombs of various bishops are located here. Queen Chosrovanuksh donated the cathedral for the welfare of her sons Sumbat, Gurgen and Gajik. The Church of the Redeemer follows the construction plan of the older Mother of God Church, but is larger and contains more niches. Prince Grigor Palavuni, later named Grigor Magistros, founded a college here in the 10th century. This marked the beginning of another intensive construction phase. The monastery complex was enlarged with the Grigor Chapel, library and courtyard. Princess Ranush planned these additions in 1063. Close to St. Grigor Church is the Scriptorium, one of the most interesting buildings of Armenian architecture. In the library, with its many angles, niches and cross arches, only sparse light enters through a central jerdik. The precious manuscripts had to be protected from both light and weather. Adjacent, the Grigor Chapel encloses a small monastery courtyard. Built as a cross-domed chapel, the compact circular building is a perfect example of its time. On a hill beyond the monastery is a cemetery with a 14th century resurrection chapel. And in front, the famous cross stone chachka of the monastery. In subsequent years, Sanayin was destroyed twice. Again, down to the village. Queen Vanenin had a stone bridge constructed over the Debed River in commemoration of her husband. It's an architectural triumph that crosses the dangerous Whitewater River. Back on the high plateau, within sight of the Sanahin Monastery, is the monastery complex of Hachpat, founded by the Kyurikjans family. In the Middle Ages, this monastery was a large centre of culture in which notables of that time worked. A small gate leads into the large gavit of the main church. In 1201, this vestibule comprised the remains of a wall of the old mausoleum of King Kyurike III. Freestanding columns support four mighty arches.
On the walls, there are cross stones and stone tablets. The cross arches divide the interior into nine sections. The cross church is a typical cross-domed building whose dome is supported by four pilasters. The remains show that formerly the walls of the church were almost completely covered with frescoes. Cross stones adorn the rear passage to the library. which dates back to the 13th century. Above a central octagonal yerdik, light enters and provides illumination. The All Redeemer cross stone from the year 1273 is one of the most beautiful that the Armenian stonemasons of old created. The portraits of the Twelve Apostles frame a central crucifixion scene. A small Mother of God chapel was also built. The Hamazasp building is the largest of the monastery complex. A square columned hall with a large light. It looks like a gavit. Still within the monastery walls, the Ukhanat mausoleum has been well preserved. On the slopes above the monastery, the last building, the refectory, was built as part of the enclosing wall. This was the monks' dining room, but today the question is, how many monks inhabited the monastery? Queen Kosrovanuch had the first church of the monastery built for her sons Sambat and Gurgen, who are featured holding it in their hands. The freestanding bell tower was built at the highest point. Two chapels, one on top of the other, are crowned by a slender bell tower. Outside the protective walls is a source house with a hidden holy spring that was worshipped by the people. People travel to the holy spring from far and wide. They believed that for as long as the spring water flowed, they would live a happy, healthy, and peaceful life. The closer we get to neighbouring Georgia in the north, the more isolated, wilder and romantic is the scenery. A small side path of Monastery Road leads higher and higher into the wooded mountain landscape. At each turn, one detects a little more of the archaic highlight of this journey, until again dense green obscures the view. And then, the mighty, well-fortified Akhtala Monastery. This 
well-preserved monastery fortress was built in the 10th century AD on the site of earlier buildings that date back to both the Bronze and Iron Ages. The Akhtala Monastery was for some time a church of the Armenian Georgian population and derived its present day appearance from that time. The people were mine workers and named the monastery Meramani. The monastery fortress was important for the defense of northeastern Armenia. Along the entire northern wall are the remains of a palace that consisted of several far-reaching levels. The Mother of God Church continues to be the center of the church fortress. massive stone construction with many stone reliefs on its external walls. The sturdy external walls offered protection and their stone construction also protected the fortress from fire. The interior architecture of the Mother of God Church is Armenian, a typical cross-domed church with two freestanding pillars. However, the actual internal decoration is Georgian Byzantine. The paintings contradict Armenian apostolic tradition. Within the lowest altar area of the Rondo are several saints. The luminosity of the colors is impressive. Deepest blue, shimmering gold, and warm shades of brown. They are unique to Armenia and much prized. Art historians have concluded that the frescoes contain numerous layers, the oldest of which date back to the 13th century. High above the main entrance, Jesus is enthroned surrounded by saints who worship him. Large frescoes with motifs that depict religious history are visible on each wall. Martyrs are also featured with the Mother of God on a throne. There's also the sun in its various stages, as people of faith once expected to see. The mood within this sacred building is moving and mystical, an intimate breath of the past. The varied views within the church are quite remarkable, a poignant candlelit scene. And when a ceremonially clothed priest reads mass, his sacred words seem almost archaic. Armenia's Apostolic Church is the world's oldest established church. And this marks the end of Monastery Road. <laughs>